Hey everybody, welcome back to another Creo tutorial. Today we're going to go over the recorder docker and how to use it. It is new to Creta 5, so hopefully this will be fun for you when you learn how to use it. I do have the windows open as just transparency, so if you hear outside noise, I apologize. It's a hot day. So first we're going to go to settings, dockers, and we're going to go down to recorder. So I have mine detached. If yours winds up somewhere over here, just click on the recorder and drag it out and you can have it um, detached from your toolbar or your sidebar. And then you can obviously go ahead and expand it. For some reason it's difficult to do. There we go. You don't have to have it expanded like this, I just made it bigger. Alright, so first we're going to go over what this does. So what this is going to do is going to start recording what you do in the canvas area. It will not record the entire screen like I'm doing now via OBS. So when you go and start recording something, it's only gonna be the canvas itself. It's not gonna be your sidebars, your um, dockers, your, your actual brushes, all that stuff that's not gonna be there. To make sure you're recording everything you're doing though, we want to make sure you have a folder for this. So I went ahead and made a folder for testing purposes before I recorded this video. So I already have one called snapshots, testing, and that's all you need to do. You don't have to do anything else. Now if you want specific organization, you want to go a step further, let's say you want to say, oh all of my Monday recordings are here, you can go ahead and do that. That's totally fine. But that's a personal preference. I'm going to hit cancel. It's fine where it is. We're also going to go over the capture interval. So this is going to be every second. It will capture a new snapshot. So if I were to make a bunch of scribbles here every second, it's basically going to catch almost everything I do. You can obviously increase this to every five seconds. So if you're working and you are painting something pretty heavy, uh, let's see. Like let's say you're like, oh, I want to, you know, make a waterfall, you know, I'm going to scribble this here, here's the water, and by doing it every five seconds, it's not going to capture everything you do, it's only going to capture snapshots of every five seconds, so it's going to have less data. We can change the format, so PNG or JPEG. JPEGs are obviously lower resolution. You can change the quality, so it, by default it's 80%, so if you want 100%, you can change it to 100. You can right click and type in the number, and so if you want this to be 50, you can right click on the number, type in 50, and hit enter, and it'll be 50. If you want PNG, which is a higher quality, as always, you have the compression option, so if you want to compress it, usually the default is 1, but if you want to um, compress it a little more to save a little bit more space in your computer, you can hide put it up to all the way to five and again you can right click and type in the number the resolution so my canvas is 3600 by 2400 and you can do half of that so that is going to reduce the quality a little bit this is personal preference i'm going to keep it at original because if i really want to i can change the quality in post i can't believe i said that but i did if you don't know it's a joke in the film industry just fix it in post so, yeah, I'm going to leave this at JPEG just because I don't really need this to be a PNG. That's fine. This is just for demonstration purposes. You also have record and isolate mode. So if you are like me and you use isolate mode for your groups or for your layers, let's say I have a bunch uh, I've got some grass here. I'll pretend that's grass. Move oh, that off to the side. But I'm like, oh, I only want to focus on the water. I go into isolate mode. I can start painting some highlights or whatever. All right? And that's going to record that. If I have this unchecked, it's not going to record the isolate feature. So it may not get your full snapshot there. All right, and record automatically. So. It's not going to do anything for this file I just opened, but if you select that and you go to make a new file or you open up a new one, it's going to record everything you do automatically. You don't have to worry about the settings as long as you don't want to change that. So as I can see, I'm scribbling, all that great stuff. I go to the folder, oh, hit stop, and then go to the folder. This right here is just what I did. Okay, so I went ahead and I scribbled all the 
fun smiley face there. I don't know why I spent so much time on that. But as you can see, it recorded every second and it's got all these images here. So I just went to my Windows um, browser and opened the folder. It's not showing here for some reason. It's showing the folder was created, but not the images itself, which is fine. So that's all my scribbles. And that was with the record automatically. I did stop it at the end just because I didn't want it to keep going. So if you want to always record everything you do in Krita, make sure to have that on every new file you open or every file you open that's already made in existence. It'll make you a new folder. It's the year, the month, the date. And I think this is the time. So that's 12, maybe 12, 12 and 12, 02. I don't know. I'm not too sure about the last like four or five numbers, but the first set here, that's what it is. And you can always rename it after. It's, it shouldn't break anything. And that's how you can use the record automatically. So I'm going to close that. I don't need that open. All right. So back here, I'm going to turn that off. So we're going to go up here to this little icon, which is manage recordings. So here you can see all the recordings that I've done today. You can select them or you can deselect them. So I don't want this anymore. This is the test I did. I can just trash it. So I can go ahead and hit discard. So it's going to say that you're going to be able, that it's going to be deleted. You're not going to be able to export it. It's just gone, right? You're not going to be able to get it back. So I can hit yes. I do the same thing for that one, but I'm going to leave it. You can also select all, you know, all that fun stuff. So it's just an easy way to kind of look at all your recordings and delete them or whatever, much easier than going through your Windows Explorer or whatever computer you're using. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to just record this so we have a second recording to mess with. I'm just put some clouds here, you know, professional. You go here, you can see my other recording. Perfect. Looks great. So now we have the recordings. So there are a couple things you can do. You can go back to your uh, folder where you have all this. All right, so now that you have all your recordings, there's a couple things you can do. If you want, you can take all these images and import them into an image sequence into your editor of choice. I use HitFilm Express, so I could just use um, import this as an image sequence and change the settings there. Or you can export via Krita. So just so you know, in order to export it, you need the FFmpeg software. So what you need to do to get that software is you have to go to this site here, which I will link in the description. You want to go to release builds. You want to download the 7-zip version. If you don't have 7-zip, uh, it's free to, to install and everything. But if you're not comfortable with installing everything, you can just use the regular zip. And when you go to install, it's not going to be like a normal program. We actually place the installation wherever you want. So I left mine in my downloads and this is just the whole build. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Krita after you install it and un unzip it or whatever. And you're going to go to the folder icon and you're going to hit the, um, this exe application. And that basically is going to tell Krita that's what you use to export the this as a, a playable video. You can change the settings here, so you can do 30 frames per second. Um, I'm going to actually lower that to 24. All right, and then you can resize it to whatever ratio you want. If you, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe you're doing this for Instagram Reels or something, you want to change it to a square format. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you would want to do that for. And then you can render as different um, settings. So I'm leaving it as the MP4. That's more than enough. I don't need to put this for web. I don't know. I don't need to. I don't need to make a GIF or anything. That's perfectly fine. And then the video location is where you want this saved. Um, I just put it in this folder last time I was testing it out, and that's fine for me. We can. Uh, I guess we'll name it Cloud Test Export, and then we can go ahead and export. All right, so now that it's done, we can either remove the recording, show in a folder, or watch it. So I'm gonna hit watch it. Whoop, let me actually move this over to the screen so we can watch this. And you can see that I added the clouds, right? It's a five second long little video, very quick. 
if I recorded the whole thing, it would make more sense. So we can go ahead and restart and make a new one. Now as a note too, the video duration will show up at the bottom. So if you're not sure how long this is going to be, that's how long it's going to be. Alright, so let's say you're done recording for the day or you close the file. Maybe you saved it, maybe you didn't, you just want to test things out. And you want to go back to the recorder docker. If you open up the recordings list, it will save what you've recorded for whatever you haven't deleted yet, but you can't go back and export it from the recorder itself. It's only going to export what is currently there for that file in that session. So every time you go and make a new recording, so I'll just go ahead and hit record, make some scribbles here, and we'll stop, go to the folder. It's going to make a new folder for that date and that session. It's not going to put it all in the same folder just because it's the same file. So just keep that in mind. You may have to have a couple files, merge them together, export it when you're done with that session if you want it to be a video automatically. Otherwise, you can just put it in your video editor of choice and import it as an image sequence because you can still have those images there in the uh, folders. It's just something to keep in mind depending on, on your preferred method of handling the files. And that's pretty much it for the recorder docker. If you have any questions about this or questions about anything else in Krita and Krita 5, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.